Are yeah. you comfortable? Yep. Are you comfortable? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. This is the film Glutton. Thank you for joining me. This is DC Gluttons. I'm going to go ahead and call it a special edition because this is about my Warner Brothers studio tour, uh, mainly the Justice League exhibit. Uh, and so because of that, it's also my salute to Zack Snyder and tip of my hat to the hashtag release the Snyder Cut movement. Uh, Ross, was, uh, one of my good friends, Ross and Tommy, were both in from out of town. Um, and they really wanted to do this. So I go, you know what? Would you guys mind taking a couple minutes out of your vacation to do a quick little uh, uh, podcast on this? And they're like, yeah, sure, let's do that. Well, mainly Ross was and then Tommy was like a fly on the wall. But we pulled him in for a couple of cool little quotes. Um, Ross and I have been friends forever. We both worked uh, for Disney many, many, many moons ago, and we've been uh, close friends ever since. He's got his own website called Rewards, RewardsPointer.com. Please check it out. And that's not just to, not just to support him for coming on the show, but because it's a really cool website. Uh, RewardsPointer.com. A uh, quick little thing. I'm just going to read from his website directly. I've taken several vacations for free and earned thousands of dollars in gift cards and cash back just by paying for my everyday expenses. I'm on a mission to experience as much of this planet as humanly possible. Now I run the site to show you how to do the same. There's a great article. One of my favorite ones was about uh, his staycation in Orlando, about an embassy suites. He tells you about how many points it was, how we use the points, why you chose that hotel, uh, how the hotel was. And it's just really informative. Uh, so I would check it out and it's fun. Um, and then also it can links to his YouTube site from there. Uh, for, so just go to rewardspointer.com and you can get all of it. Um, I believe, uh, under YouTube, but he's just under Ross Horn and he's got the rewards pointer videos there, but check out the main website. Uh, the only bit of news I do want to cover is Aquaman, um, News came out today from Entertainment Weekly, an exclusive first look, a bunch of pictures. Uh, I'm probably going to throw up the picture of uh, Black Manta because that was the thing that got me the most excited. But go to Entertainment Weekly, check out the rest of the pictures. There's some cool stuff and more power to them for advertising uh, the new Aquaman. I'm super pumped for this. Uh, so we're just going to move right into the video. The first part is uh, us getting to know Ross a little bit and where he stands as a DC fan. And no spoilers there because it's really funny, but it allows you to understand that we are coming from very different uh, perspectives when uh, going into this exhibit. And uh, then we go, then I go into the detailed uh, uh, a Justice League exhibit part. And then there's going to be tons of pictures accompanying that. Um, there's The studio tour was a lot more all-encompassing. Uh, if you're a DC fan, it's 100% 100 a must. But if you're just a Warner Brothers fan, if you liked Friends, if you liked... Uh, there's a whole list of things, old classic Warner Brothers movies. This, this tour was comprehensive and cool. I recommend it. It was $65, so I had to save a little bit to make sure I could do it. But it was so worth it. Um, then, uh, so we... we I get to know him a little bit then we go into the tour and then the final part is we are covering a, a bit of news it was from last week well, one of the scenes that never made it into BVS but my understanding was it was shot um, and the reason why I talk about I, I didn't talk about that in any of my other DC Gluttons videos but also because I bring it back obviously BVS is being a Zack Snyder film because I bring it back to Zack Snyder it's a nice little conclusion to this video to wrap it up anyway so let's get right into it thanks for joining us so I was telling you about the Hashtag release the Snyder Cut movement. But first I needed to find out how versed you are in the Snyder verse. So you were just telling me, what's which is why I had to hit record, that you hadn't seen BVS, Batman vs. Superman. Right. And did you see Man of Steel? No. Did you see Wonder Woman? Yes. Did you see uh, Justice League? No. Okay, so you've seen not a single film in the DC Universe <laughs> that Zack Snyder <laughs> has directed. But one, once he produced, he produced Wonder Woman. Okay. He had his hands in that. Okay, let's go a little further back. Did you see Sucker Punched? No. Did you see 300? I'm sure I did at some point in time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty old one. What about, I don't know. Started losing my guys. Uh, Dawn of the Dead, the remake. No. So, oh, oh, Watchmen. Did you watch Watchmen? No. But <laughs> this is a great 
time to do a show with you because we did do the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. So first, yes. let's go over the release of Snyder Cut movement, which I fully support because I did enjoy Justice League for what it was. I'm just going to say my opinion since you haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> since you don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine it was good. Right. Imagine it was funny. Um, no, I mean, and I, I loved things that Joss Whedon did add in. But anyways, it's not going to get be all about Justice League. I just want to say that I did love it, but I would have loved to see the Justice League Snyder version, which was basically what this whole movement's basically about, trying to get them to do a director's cut of Justice League. And we know that he, we lost, I think it's roughly around 40 minutes of footage that he that Snyder would have overseen aside from what we actually had in the film. And then what Joss Whedon added a lot. So it would have been a completely different film. It would be a very different film, I should say, than what we saw in the theater. It would be a lot longer. The the one in the theaters was only just under two hours. This one would probably be like, like the, the Batman uh, or BVS ultimate cut where it's at least two and a half hours, if not maybe close to three, at least two and a half. (laughs) Let's just say it's not quite as long as Titanic. (laughs) <laughs> right, right. <laughs> a little bit shorter, but a lot more uh, awesomeness, hopefully, and a lot less boat sinking. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a boat Fair sinking, enough. then Superman's going to save True, the boat, exactly. like he did in BVS. Just so you know, we do have a third wheel here, so I might <laughs> occasionally reference that person. He's dead. He's, he's not speaking. <laughs> but, he's a mute. <laughs> <laughs> I know he has a lot more knowledge so uh, on nerdy stuff. So I might look at him every once in a while. So if it seems like I'm talking to somebody else, it's not just Ross. That's that's who it is. Since we were doing the Warner Brothers Studio Tour, I thought that would be a perfect time to um, bring in. Because uh, it was pretty much the DC area was all Snyder. A lot of it. There were uh, there was, of course, it was all DC films. So there was a Batmobile section that covered, that didn't actually have any of the, didn't have the Snyder Batmobile. It only had um, the Batmobiles from Dark Knight Rises and Batman. Oh, it did have um, the Joker mobile from Suicide Squad. But the main hall where it had the Justice League is the Hall of Justice, I'll just call it. I don't know if they called it that, but that was pretty good. Um, That was pretty much all a salute to Zack Snyder because either it was Zack Snyder directed or Zack Snyder produced when he had the Wonder Woman section. What did you think about that, that section? Anything that stood out for you? with you no it was a cool section yeah um i mean i admit i didn't know a whole lot yeah of detail yeah yeah the you know backstories and all but you know the costumes and the props and everything were right pretty awesome to look at nice yeah i I, so basically when you walk in and i do have some pictures i'll be putting over as we're talking so people will have an image uh, idea of what they're doing and i will say for anyone that i'm not giving you like the full tour there's a lot of other warner brothers stuff that that it was a small section that was dc i'm gonna highlight some of those things um but i encourage everyone to do the tour because it was a lot of fun in general did you like the tour absolutely it was was a blast time yeah it was like four hours yeah about it was a long time yeah I mean, I think three, but I mean, we uh, kind of <laughs> yeah. Then I walk, did some walk extra around. stuff, which was awesome. You know, don't we didn't rush out of there. There was some cool things to see. And then I spent like an hour in the gift shop. Yeah, alone. it's true. Exactly. Yeah. So that brought it up to four hours there. Two hour, three hour tour. John and gift shop for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I had well, I, like I shouldn't have spent any money, but then I saw that there was a whole Green Lantern section, and then there was the Warner Brothers, the logo I got. Maybe I'll take a picture of it to show everyone what I did get the shirt. Yes, that was just, an awesome shirt, right? It was beautiful. It had it was said Warner Brothers Studio, and in the W was Green Lantern was in the middle, but it was the uh, like DC Universe. Like, oh yes. my god, it was gorgeous. Hopefully, I'll take a picture of that. Just take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> but that was like like an hour trying to decide. But anyway, so back to the Hall of Justice. We're going in. The first thing you see is the giant Justice League stand that has all of them on the picture. And then um, you go around the corner, um, and then it has all the the Justice League suits. So it had uh, Superman. Um, it was Superman Flash on one side, and then Batman and Aquaman, I think, on the other and then, uh, or try to get the sequence. It's okay if the sequence is not exactly right. I will say, I do know Superman was first where I went in, if you went to the right, because... Yeah, Superman was on the right, first thing. Yeah. That. 
I had to take. Did you like look at any of the details of the suit? I did not look at the details. It was an awesome looking suit, though. Okay. From a distance. Because I definitely took a close up, and this picture I'll, I'll throw over this, because I definitely took a close up of. I took a full picture of the Superman suit from um, Justice League. And. And then, and also from basically inspired from Man of Steel all the way through, um, I took a close-up picture um, because it does, and it does, it has the Kryptonian symbology. What's the word they use? They, they call it Kryptonian script. Is exactly what uh, Warner Brothers calls it. But that was created by um, Zack Snyder. That's why I wanted to mention it because it was so beautiful. I do want to say Michael Wilkinson just because um, he was the actual costume designer. Um, but it on the plaque, it gave Zack Snyder credit as well for coming up with that, the script. And it's cool in the films to see because it just gives texture to the suit. But it, to me, it's the perfect example of um, Zack Snyder's eye for detail. The way everything in the shot, which is why I'm such a Snyder fan, every, every aspect of the shot is taken into account right down to the texture of the suit saying wait a minute this is going to be uh, kryptonian material it's going to look different and it's going to feel different so how do we make that difference and it just it looked really cool once you could actually get up there and look at it up close you see that texture and it just it, it was surreal to me personally I don't know. that's pretty cool yeah definitely uh very detail oriented guy you know yeah 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 did you have a fra- favorite suit uh the batman one was pretty cool actually yeah batman was awesome there was there was some texture to that too um which was really cool pretty much all of them are what you see in the film you know like uh the flash i looked at the flash had all the bands because it was a makeshift suit that he created uh which was interesting because in the uh snyder did say that in his version there was actually going to be a second flash suit which was really fascinating because that was supposed to be the one he made And then Bruce Wayne was supposed to help create an actual suit by the end of the film. So, but it was still cool regardless. But the Batman suit was really awesome. And I actually think in general, this Batman suit is one of the best ones we've had, personally. I don't know, how do you think it compares to maybe like the Dark Knight Rises suit? Since you got to see... They had had both there, by the way. I mean... (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, then we have um, the Wonder Woman. So we have the the Aquaman suit, which was it said it weighed like eighty pounds. I think I wrote. I took that note. Yeah, it said eighty pounds. That's ridiculous. Oh, and this I found this. I wrote this down really quickly because Aquaman said uh, Aquaman. Um, Jason Momoa, the actor that played Aquaman, um, said that it, like his persona was inspired by Clint Eastwood. Now, I literally wrote this down. The outlaw, Jose Wells. I literally have wow. no idea what that is. That makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Random guy in the corner. You, do you know? No? I'm going to look that up right after this. I'm going to feel like an idiot. Be like, oh, yeah, as a cinephile, I should totally know what that reference is. I just wrote it down because I think that's worth mentioning. Um, and I think that's kind of cool. So anybody who does know what that is, they'll be like, oh, that's cool. Thanks for sharing that, John. <laughs> hopefully they're like that uh and then the wonder woman suit itself which was also gorgeous and um this this the sign said it had 14 she wore 14 different versions in the movie wow now at first thought i was like okay wait a minute that doesn't like you don't see 14 different versions in the movie but basically what they're saying is they had to um reconstruct it according to what the, what was going on in the scene they didn't give specifics but i'm guessing in terms of what type of action she was doing or maybe they could do more details if she was oh, i don't yeah. know standing yeah. still or whatever um and then the the wonder woman like the outfits from thea mascara uh i don't know if you saw that those were the more brown ones nice okay um th- those, those that was just really cool um what did you th- since you saw wonder woman right I did. We'll yes. stop right here and get your opinion on <laughs> Wonder Woman. What do you think of Wonder Woman? Uh, it was a great movie. I was definitely uh, entertained, and I was. It was. It beat my expectations. Yeah. You know, I kind of went in thinking, oh, you know, Wonder Woman, it's cool, but it was a really good movie. Yeah, that's cool. 
All right, well, so I'm going to put you in the... I'm going to check mark you as a Zack Snyder fan, even though that's Patty Jenkins was a director, and that's definitely her brainchild. Like, it was a beautiful movie, but Zack Snyder had... You could definitely feel Zack Snyder's um, aesthetics a lot. I think he had a lot to do with shot composition. Um, I'm just scrolling through some of the pictures. Oh, that's right. The Flash did also have... All the little designs. That was some of the some of the details they had was like they had the sketches that he did. I'll show some of those as well. Um, there was awesome. the computer screen that was all from the scene where uh, Bruce Wayne and him are speaking inside. I don't know. We call it the Flash Cave because <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually. Uh, anyways, his secret base. There was some pictures and some on the and the computer and stuff like that. So. There was some stuff that they showed that was really cool. Just cool artwork. Oh, Cyborg. They, they had Cyborg. That's what it was. And the other side, it was Batman and the Cyborg. Aquaman was in the middle. Um, my favorite detail was I literally took an up-close picture of it. I'll show you. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, oh, nice. Don't worry. I'll show everybody, oh, the wow. viewers at home. I'm just yeah. showing that on my phone, but I'll show you on the... It'll be a slide. Um, the... He had a Gotham City jersey, property of Gotham City uh, jersey, because he played football. Um, that was really, really cool. Little, uh, well, not jersey, what, hoodie, whatever it's called. Hoodie, hoodie, hoodie. <laughs> yeah, not jersey. I don't, I don't do the sports. <laughs> I, I know about as much about sports as you do about yeah, superheroes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they had little comic books next to each of them. Um, just to kind of show where they came from, a little nod. That that was really cool. Um, what else? So that was the the ju- oh, and then the Wonder Woman picture. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of fanboy out with that. Did you, uh, I'll show you the picture that was in Wonder Woman. The picture that was um, actually started in BVS with uh, Bruce Wayne finding it and being like, "Wait a minute!" Like he sends the email to uh, Wonder Woman saying like. I don't know. I know you, or how long have you been around here? I, I didn't just watch the movie, guys. I'm sorry, but uh, and then so that was just really cool. Just to see that up close and just have it be real. I, there's something about being able to see these things that just was a surreal experience. I would say that about anything, whether we're talking about the the, the, the Friends part, you know, even though I wasn't yeah, a Friends absolutely. fan, but um, just being able to see the things, like even like when we're driving around and checking out some of the buildings, like I was taking notes because there was. Uh, one of the buildings that was featured in Adam West Batman. Um, oh, there was the. Uh, I took a picture of uh, Lois. Uh, it was. Uh, I think it was, it was a. It was a building of the. It was the Daily Planet, but it didn't have the Daily Planet ball yes. in front of it. Um, and it was the building that had the stairs going down. Um, the, I don't know what they used it for now, but I just inst- All I heard was this was the Daily Planet and Lois, Lois and Clark, Clark, and I'm yeah. like, Dad, wait, hold on, guys, <laughs> duck your heads. I'm taking pictures. Yeah. Watch out. Crazy man. Okay. I did get a picture um, of that one. And what's that? I did get a picture of that. You one. did you? Yeah. That was pretty cool, right? Was pretty cool. And then I gotta say this too, because there was other stuff from Wonder Woman. They were really emphasizing Wonder Woman because it was such a. It was the last one. Oh no, just like it was the last one. But it was the last, last big one. I literally what I did is I was looking at the front. It was the blue gown um, that she wore, and then I had to see because then somebody. A fly on the wall said, oh, I had to look at the sword or something like that. So then I had to look behind and take a picture of her backside. And I don't mean that in an inappropriate way. <laughs> um, to see how this sword actually, like, did they get that detail in there? And they absolutely did. They had the sword in the dress. I don't still don't understand the physics to that. Because of where that blade would be going, it seems not like it would be a fun thing to carry around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Tommy's jumping in. Tommy's jumping in. All right, all right, all right. For the physics of the sword. Oh, get a little closer. Sword ha- okay. For the physics of the sword, the sword would have to be between the uh, the cheeks to hold it in place. Yes. It is a proven fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. But, fun fact about the cyborg uh, exhibit there it's actually one of the largest 3D models. Uh, completely made out of 3D, uh, 3D printer, um, and I believe nice. he said it was metal, but they made it specially for the, um, for the gallery there, and that originally it was just done CGI, he had all the dots on his face and everything. Yeah. 
That's awesome. That's really cool. Good detail. And then the last thing I didn't mention that was on that was the mother boxes themselves. Uh, they had three different mother boxes, each one. And anyone who's seen the film knows what that's the main premise. Uh, I'll show it to, to Ross so he knows what I'm talking about here. Yes, I did see those. And basically, that's the main premise of Justice League. Uh, Steppenwolf is trying to gain all mother boxes. Um, and then uh, on the way out, and there was a bunch of art all around. And then on the way out, there was a mural that I could definitely identify as part of DC Rebirth. Any any other thoughts you had on the the tour from the suits or anything in general? Yeah, it's just it was nice just to see everything real. You know, the stuff you see in the movies, right, right in front of your face. Just gonna try to fit in real quick. Um, there, there was uh, since we we're talking about Snyder. Um, and again, I own every Snyder film. I own all the DCEU, which I'm st- I still refuse not to call it D- DC because I said, we're not the DCEU. I don't know why I keep calling it that. They, they actually called me personally and said, John, why do you keep calling it that? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> One of the Animaniacs did. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm top. I don't know. I, I can't do imitations. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, anyways, but you got to have some kind of name. So I own all the, the Zack Snyder videos, uh, movies. And then all the DCEU ones. Um, but I'm just going to say that again. I, I know I said it in the beginning. But I'm just I'm letting you guys know I'm a Snyder fan. And you need me to prove it. Um, He's not a Snyder fan. <laughs> he hasn't seen any of these films, really. <laughs> He's making it up. <laughs> he he imdb this guy. He started rattling off movies. <laughs> uh there was okay um let me i'm just uh read from my notes to see what you think you didn't see bbs so uh tom you might want to listen to this one um i don't know if you heard this news but you might have an opinion because you did see bbs right reluctantly yeah okay we're gonna edit that part out <laughs> uh he said reluctantly in case you couldn't hear it over the mic uh bvs martha Z- oh okay um larry fong was one of the cinematographers um on batman versus superman and he did confirm that bvs actually they took out batman versus superman took out one of the a uh, martha scene in this scene um superman uh, attempted to use his super hearing to try to locate his mother. So uh, so the scene where um, Lex Luthor comes out and he's throwing the... Uh, okay, uh, let's go all the way back. Just just really quick for... Because Ross hasn't seen it at all. So Lex Luthor kidnaps um, Martha, uh, a Superman's mom. or Yeah, Superman's mom. Um, in order to pit him against Batman. Saying, you've got to go kill the Bat. And he basically wants them to destroy each other. He's thinking this is going to happen. Um and he's been egging him on throughout the entire movie. So how he the final thing to push Superman over the edge, um, I mean not literally because he flies, so you can't really push him over the edge. <laughs> uh, he starts he kidnaps his mom and he starts throwing photos at him and he's like you know like I got your mom and she she's hid so well don't even bother looking. That's how they got around it because as soon as you see it you go Superman can fly he can run super fast you know he races against the Flash even and he's got super hearing super vision like how does he not just go get his mother? Basically he he throws uh, Eisenberg throws uh, Lex Luthor throws a one liner saying. You know, don't even try. I, I hit her really, really well. And as a fan, you kind of go, it's, it is Lex Luthor. He's known for being really, really smart. So he did find, we don't know because it was all done off screen, but um, he must have found that great audience spot. Yes. Um, the scene they took out was um, him trying to use a super hearing, but he literally, because he's a, a younger Superman, he couldn't hear over um he couldn't figure out his mother's cries over all the cries for help so basically he was inundated so kind of a reference way back to man of steel because a man of steel he's locked in the closet as a kid and he he, he can't handle his x-ray vision and in uh, a super hearing so it's all going wacko and he's just like hides in the closet tries to close his eyes because he can't deal with it it's almost something like there's a little bit of nod with that is what it sounded like um and basically what they said was they they took it out because it was just simply too dark because it just showed how many people um superman like wasn't saving in the film which is one of the quote-unquote issues with it 
I personally loved hearing it, and I kind of, I really wish this would kind of would have been in it, only because I one I love the throwback to Man of Steel. I love the fact that he's a younger Superman trying to cope with all this. And one of the things that when you're reading comic books, you do bring in this crazy logic into it. You're like, okay, I'm gonna let him get away with stuff, but I'm still gonna ask questions. And one of those questions is like, how does Superman have a day job, for instance, as a reporter and still go out there and like constantly save people, you know, or any of the superheroes. I know Superman has the most leeway because he has so many superpowers. But for me, it's like there's still going to be people he misses. And does he ever have to choose or whatever it may be? And so it wouldn't be him choosing. It would just be him being like, I don't. It would show him having to choose to turn off certain things. It would, he would make. He would have to make him make a choice, a godlike choice, if you will, between life or death, um, in a lot of ways. So um, it wouldn't have been a direct choice, but it would. He would have had to ignore certain things in order to go after and save his mom and try to figure this out and, and continue the scene to the next scene where he actually meets up with Batman. I don't know if any of that made sense, but I think it would have added a richness to it, and that's what I love about Snyder. He adds these depths. These kids, they're not dark. Uh, I'm just going to say it. They're not dark. They're fucking human. I try not to swear. <laughs> <laughs> but it gets me up. It's like, oh, it's just too dark. No, they're complex. They're rich. They're human. Superman maybe has to make a choice when he hears yeah. people crying for help. Anyways, I'm going off. I just want to get your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, he's not perfect, you know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not what you want to hear, but. Yeah interesting i'd believe it okay we're just gonna add the ask the semi mute since he did talk a little bit what do you think of any of that he's on his phone ladies and gentlemen so he's not even listening to me do i have to start for that from the top okay we're gonna take the whole show from the top we're gonna start from the beginning <laughs> so wait are we starting from where ross said he never watched any of these films yeah we're starting we're taking it from where ross said he never watched any of the films <laughs> um, and i'm playing with my straw you can probably hear on the microphone that's terrible it's a it's a fun twist to watch a a god with a human complex. Okay, okay this I think you're gonna say something interesting. So okay. can you get a stand up? I'm sorry. And he I'm just saying he's taking off his Avengers blanket to come over and talk to me. Is that what that is? Is that an Avengers blanket? Oh my god, you you piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta pull out my Guardians blanket. <laughs> just talking to the microphone. All right, all right. It's always interesting to watch a character uh, that has godlike powers like Superman, um, who is also raised as a human, so has human morals, have to make certain decisions like that. Um, I always feel like that um, when watching Supergirl, for instance, uh, it, she always has to end up making decisions that are either going to save the world or keep her happy uh, for very similar reasons. Awesome. I like that. Okay, I think we're going to just wrap it up there. Do you have any anything to say on your on our way out, Ross? That was perfect. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, if they're part human, you can't completely forget about that part just because they also have superpowers. So, yeah. It has to kind of go together. So what you're really saying is Zack Snyder is the most awesome director and producer in the world, and we he needs to be hired back onto the Warner Brothers DC universe, and we should have a Justice League Snyder cut released. Is that is that is that what you're saying from that? You know, after <laughs> these last thirty five minutes or so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, guys. Uh, hope you had a lot of fun. I definitely did. Again, I absolutely recommend that tour. I want to thank uh, both Ross and Tommy for joining me today. Again, check out uh, Ross's website, uh, rewardspointer.com. It's really cool. It's really fun. A lot of good blogs and everything on there. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, next week, I'll be able to get a show together with uh, uh, Carlos again. Uh, we've been having a hard time mix, uh, trying to get our schedules to jive, uh, but it would be great to have him on again. Um, but it was really fun to nice to take a little break and have some of my uh, other friends on. Uh, so thanks again for joining us again. I recommend the tour. Um, I will remain being a Zack Snyder fan if you are. If not, hopefully just remain being a DC fan. I'm super excited for plenty of more shows and all the DC movies that we're, we got coming up. I'm going to cover this much stuff as, as I'm going to cover it as much as humanly possible. Uh, so anyways, this is the film Glutton reminding you to never turn down an upgrade. Have a great one, folks.